A psychic arrives in a town where a group of supernatural people treats each other like family. However, troubles with the police and his grandmother's past soon threaten this quiet town. Manfred Bernardo greets his client, Rachel, who wishes to communicate with her dead husband. Manfred warns that his fee has increased, but Rachel claims he's worth every penny. Later, they begin a seance to communicate with her dead husband, Harold. Manfred claims that Harold is there and that her husband thinks Rachel's new haircut is hot. The woman laughs since, after 32 years of marriage, he only likes her short hair now that he's dead. Rachel misses him every day, but Harold doesn't want to see her grieve because he wants her to be happy. With this, the woman admits to seeing someone new, so Harold asks who it is. The candle flame abruptly blew out as soon as Rachel said the name, and the temperature in the room began to drop. The mirror suddenly shatters, revealing Harold's enraged spirit. Manfred orders him to stay back, but the spirit takes over his body and yells at Rachel, angry that she chose his business partner and friend. He tosses her their wedding ring and flips the table. Harold takes a piece of glass and tries to kill Rachel so that they can be together again. But Manfred manages to regain control of his body and remove him. Manfred then pulls back the curtains, jokingly saying that Harold must despise change. After Rachel leaves, he visits his website, revealing that he's a psychic reader. Suddenly, he receives a call from a man named Hightower, saying he can't run from him. Manfred claims he'll pay him back, but the man states that it's too late and he'll find him. With this, the young man instantly hangs up and drives to hide from the man. Along the road, the spirit of his grandmother, Zilda, appears and comments that Manfred looks terrible. She asserts that midnight would suit him since he wants to settle down and vanish. She adds that he'd be secure there, but Manfred jokes that it'd mean more if it came from someone who wasn't dead. As he arrives at the town, people watch his vehicle drive by. While exiting his van, he's nearly run over by a woman wearing a red wig. Manfred then enters a pawn shop, where he hears voices from the antiques echoing their past. The man then meets Bobo, his new landlord. They proceed to his new house, and the landlord confesses that he checked him out before allowing him to rent the place. Knowing he is a psychic, he offers him a month rent-free on the house if Manfred helps him find his fiancée, Aubrey. However, the man refuses, claiming that he's not a real psychic and he's just good at reading people. At night, Manfred visits a diner called Home Cookin' to order food to go. Surprisingly, the girl at the counter, Creek, figures out that he's Bobo's new tenant. The young girl compliments his RV car and says she lives with her dad and little brother at the Gas and Go. She then invites him to a room where the midnight residents sit, the remaining diners for Davy residents in town for the yearly fall picnic. In the room, he meets Olivia, the girl with the red wig earlier, and Lemuel Bridger. As Creek leaves, Lemuel advises Manfred not to look at her with interest when her father is around since he's not someone to be messed with. Olivia then leaves as Manfred sits down at the table. As Creek waits at the table, a gang called the Sons of Lucifer taunts her. With this, Lemuel leeches Manfred's energy to prepare himself since he's worried something will happen to Creek. He releases him when the woman is able to refuse the men's attention. Confused and distraught, Manfred asks what he is, to which Lemuel reveals that he's a vampire. Lemuel offers him a drink to recover his energy, which works. The vampire claims that he's less frightening compared to the gang and Manfred laughs since it's new to him to have freaks in one room aside from him. The psychic asks if the vampire doesn't suck blood from the neck, but Lemuel claims that's always an option. Creek serves his food and invites him to the picnic tomorrow, but Manfred's unsure. However, Lemuel encourages him, noting that midnight is different in daylight, so Manfred agrees. The following day, the entire community assembles for the annual fall picnic. Olivia asks Fiji about her feelings and longing gaze toward Bobo. She wonders why Creek invited Manfred to the picnic, to which they claim she's lonely. However, Fiji claims that she gave Manfred sand tarts, which identifies if the person who ate it has bad intentions. Fortunately, he didn't react to the cookies, so he must mean well. Due to a dog's insistent barking, the women check on it. Suddenly, Fiji screams as she sees a dead body on the river. Everyone rushes to them and discovers that the body is Bobo's fiancée, Aubrey. As they look at the body, Manfred sees her eyes looking at him, which unnerves him. Sheriff Livingston instructs everyone that no one is permitted to leave town without obtaining authorization. Then, Officer Tina Gomez spots Manfred, noticing that he he's new in town. She asks why he chose to relocate to midnight, to which he claims that it's quiet and cheap. 
Tina comments that it's cheap because of the town's link with the occult. Children in Davy even challenge each other to traverse Witchlight Road on full moons. When Manfred defends that the people are nice, Tina comments that Fiji might like girls or is a witch. Manfred shrugs that she might be both, not bothered by the idea. Meanwhile, Livingston asks why Bobo didn't report her missing despite disappearing for two weeks. However, Bobo believed she'd gone away because of their previous disagreement. At night, Manfred sleeps until the room gets cold, and a fly wakes him up. As he looks at the other side of the bed, Aubrey is there with him. Jumping off the bed, he demands her to leave, saying she doesn't belong there. Still, Aubrey writes, help on the window. So Manfred agrees to assist, but only in his way with precautions. The next day, Bobo watches a video of him proposing to Aubrey. Fiji notices his sadness, so she brings breakfast and offers him company. Meanwhile, Manfred goes to the chapel to fill his container with holy water. As he enters, he notices a strange painting on the wall. Suddenly, the reverend appears behind him, asking if he's taking holy water. He fills up the holy water for the young man and invites him to Sunday service if he's interested. At the pawn shop, Bobo informs Fiji about Aubrey's desire for four children, but he compromised on getting a dog. The sheriff arrives to talk to Bobo, but the man insists Fiji to stay. Livingston informs them that Aubrey died because of a gunshot wound and drowning. Her true name was apparently Aubrey Hamilton Lowry, which confuses them since she was engaged to Bobo. However, the sheriff reveals that she was married to a white racialist and a son of Lucifer member, Peter Lowry, five years before. He'd just come out of prison after serving a three-year term, and the cops couldn't find him. Livingston advises the grieving man to contact him if Peter shows up instead of taking matters into his own hands. Meanwhile, Manfred starts his ritual and summons Aubrey while using a Ouija board to communicate with her. Aubrey begins moving the planchette but is too fast, so the man instructs her to move it slower. With that, she spells spells out the word peccados. Unfortunately, the seance is disrupted by a swarm of unwelcome spirits. An orange light also shines beneath the floor before pushing Manfred out. He flees out of the room just as one of the ghosts charges at him. He then places a warding object on the doorknob to keep the ghosts inside. Elsewhere, the sheriff interviews the reverend about Audrey. He didn't know Aubrey very well. Contrary to the sheriff's initial assessment, Livingston mentions the ritualistic nature of the crime scene, and the reverend found it to be evil and depressing more than anything else. During this, Tina confronted Fiji about her involvement with witchcraft, which is believed to involve extensive animal sacrifice. Afterward, Tina goes to Manfred's house, so he immediately covers the door. As she enters, the officer notices him being strange, so she looks around the house. But the man insists that he has nothing to do with Aubrey's death since he's new there. She doubts him since she thinks his job as a psychic is a lie. To prove his abilities, the man asks the officer about Peccados. Later, the officers take Manfred to the Peccados, the town's water bank. As they search the area, they find a gun in the water. Afterward, Tina drops off Manfred, and Olivia sees this from her apartment window. In his RV, he accuses Zilda of luring him to midnight despite her assurances that it would be secure. She defends that she didn't anticipate him summoning a horde of angry spirits. Olivia unexpectedly shows up at Manfred's door. Confused, he points out that she was avoiding him, which he doesn't deny. Suddenly, she hits him in the face, knocking him unconscious. Later, Fiji goes to Olivia's room but finds Manfred tied up in a chair. Lemuel also arrives as Olivia asks her captive if he works for the police or if her father sent him, to which he says no. Suddenly, Lemuel says he's getting bored and hungry, so Fiji urges Manfred to tell them what they want to know to avoid conflict. The man reveals that his grandmother led him to midnight to be safe. To his surprise, Lemuel knows Zilda but wasn't aware that she died from throat cancer a year ago. Manfred claims that she was running from someone who also tried to kill him. Since it was late for Zilda to be killed for her wrongdoings, they turned to Manfred for payback. Manfred talks about his connection with the police and how he told them what he learned about Aubrey so they won't dig into his secrets. As a result, Lemuel instructs the women to release him because Manfred is one of them. For generations, Midnight had been a haven for people like them. Some stop by and move on like Zilda, while others, like the trio, make it their home. This makes Manfred curious about what the others are, but Olivia refuses to say. Lamwell claims that Olivia and Bobo are open-minded humans. The humans accept them as long as they are quiet, but Aubrey's death is the opposite of that. Manfred then inquires about what makes Midnight unique. 
Fiji responds that midnight is exceptional because it rests on strong magical energy, which makes the line between the living and the dead really thin. This makes Manfred realize why Zelda liked it there. Lemuel apologizes for the confusion as Manfred gets ready to leave. Later, two members of the Son of Lucifer appear at the pawn shop, accusing Bobo of killing Aubrey because he found out about her past. They threaten Bobo to tell them where the weapons and money are. As one grabs Bobo, Olivia instantly shoots him with an arrow, and Lemuel snaps the other man's neck. After convincing Bobo to go home, Lemuel confronts the injured gang member and demands to know who sent them while Olivia handles the dead body of the other man. When the man refuses to tell the vampire, Lemuel bites his neck. The following day, Manfred visits Gas and Go, and Creeks notices scars on his face. He just explains that he got into an accident with heavy boxes. Manfred notes that he hasn't seen her since the picnic, to which the woman says that she can't stop thinking about what happened. Sean, Creek's father, intervenes to inquire what Manfred is discussing with her, and he responds that he's simply being neighborly. On his way home, he notices blood dripping on the back of the Reverend's vehicle. In his RV, he receives a call from Hightower, saying that he's on his way to Texas, knowing that he's there. Suddenly, Creek knocks on the door to apologize for her dad being weird, but Manfred claims they're fine. The man then invites her for a beer, which he agrees to. He comments that Midnight is nothing like he thought, and she agrees, but the place makes good stories. With this, Manfred asks if she's a writer, but she's not. She says that once her brother leaves the house, she'll return to school since her father is tough to be with. She claims that her father changed when her mother died, so they relocated to Midnight to hide from her memories. Going to high school in Davy was a nightmare since she was known as the girl who lived with freaks, although this wasn't far from her actual living situation. She comments that Midnight for her is family. Creek shares about the people in their place, like Joe, a man who can grow wings and watches over everyone, and Bobo, who's kind but never talks about his family or where he came from. She's also seen the Reverend pull a gravestone out of the ground with one hand and asserts that he's obsessed with his pet cemetery. Additionally, Fiji does rituals and has a talking cat. Creek comments that Olivia has more secrets than anyone and owns a closet full of weapons. In her home, Olivia is forced to pass down a well-paying hit since she isn't allowed to leave town. Lemuel notices her rage, so he offers to take some of it away. Olivia accepts, so she sits in Lemuel's arms, letting him leech from her. Afterward, Creek claims that Manfred fits well in Midnight since he's a psychic. The man says it is a family business since he came from a long line of gypsy fortune tellers. Creek asks if he could give her a reading, to which he obliges. As he holds her hands, he says that her life will be long. She will see the world and meet her soulmate. Creek informs Manfred that if he were to kiss her, it would be a great time now. Before he does, however, cop lights flash nearby, so they immediately check what's happening. On the streets, Livingston arrests Bobo for Aubrey's murder. As the Midnighters surround them, Fiji asserts that Bobo didn't kill Aubrey because he loved her. The sheriff insists since the gun they found belonged to Bobo. Since the officers already assume that Bobo is guilty, Lemuel declares that he doesn't trust them. The sheriff responds that they don't trust him either, but the vampire warns him from starting a war with them. Out of anger, Fiji uses her abilities to crush the police car and levitates it. Tina knows Fiji is doing it, but the sheriff insists that witches aren't real. Fortunately, the Reverend and Olivia calm her down, so Fiji releases the car. The officers then leave the town with Bobo. Manfred claims he'll help however he can, but when he returns home, he discovers that the entire house is glowing orange as ghostly spirits roam inside. The psychic realizes that there might be more trouble for him in midnight. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.